today is a big freaking day because I'm going to put Betaflight 4.2 on one of my quads for the very first time. No, Betaflight 4.2 is not released yet. It's only in release candidate, but it's close enough and I want to know how it freaking flies. So if you want to see me put Betaflight 4.2 on one of my quads, how to get from 4.1 to 4.2, this is the video for you. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. Folks, I'm legitimately in a hurry to get this done. So I'm not going to do this as like a big detailed tutorial where I want you to follow along and I explain every step. Some of you guys are actually going to appreciate that this video is more succinct than some of my other videos. I just want to get this done. So come along with me as we get it done. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Betaflight CLI tab. I'm going to type version and I'm just going to double check the target name for the flight controller that I'm flashing. I think this is a great idea, even if you think you know what the target is, especially if you have a lot of quads you might have forgotten. The target I need is NBD Infinity. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type diff all, and I'm going to uh, save to file, and I'm going to save that out to a file somewhere on my hard drive so that I have a, a backup of my configuration. This makes setting up 4.2 or any new, new version a lot faster. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type BL for bootloader, and that will put my board into bootloader mode with the DFU in the upper right hand corner. More and more, this seems to just work smoothly, at least on my computer. I don't know if I'm lucky or if Betaflight's gotten better or Windows has gotten better. That issue where you don't have DFU and you need to run the Impulse RC driver fixer, at least for me, I haven't had to do that in a while. So if you don't get DFU up there, driver fixer link in the video description, that's how you fix it moving on. We go to the firmware flasher tab and we are going to need to enable show unstable releases and i don't know if you need expert mode no you don't need expert mode just you want to select release and release candidate and then we're going to pick our flight controller target newbie drone infinity f4 was that right and we got a little bit of a problem here because yeah the original version was newbie drone underscore infinity sometimes they do change the target name between versions of beta flight so it was newbie drone infinity n-e-w-b drone and i don't see anything like that here we change back to 416 it's just not it's not anywhere we're going to try newbie drone i mean it seems like that's it doesn't it and we're going to choose 4.2.0 release candidate 2. we are going to enable full chip erase that's always a good idea when going between well going between major versions but it's also not a bad idea when going between minor versions we'll, we'll hit load firmware and we'll hit flash firmware so i'm pretty hopeful that this is just a case where they change the target name between versions of betaflight usually you're going to use the same target name as was on the previous version in rare cases they'll change the name and then it'll be confusing and you'll have to use a little bit of guessing to find out what the right one is all right there we go we're going to connect very first time it's going to ask us if we want to apply custom defaults we'll always say yes to that well i guess the target is correct because like for example we don't have if the target was incorrect we could have the error message here gyro not found is the accelerometer not turned off all right turn the accelerometer on for now just because yeah okay now we have to calibrate the accelerometer let's just do that real quick yeah it seems like it's all working okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my CLI dump back into the command line to get my configuration back. No, do not do that. You can screw things up. But there are certain parts of the command line dump that are safe to paste in. And I have a video about going from Betaflight 4.0 to 4.1, link in the video description, that basically outlines it. But let's see. There are certain things that I know are going to be okay. The beacon... Those the motor beacon settings, that's going to be fine, I'm sure. These are the port settings. Those, I'm sure, haven't changed. Here are my aux modes. I'm sure that hasn't changed. So let's copy that. We'll go over to the CLI here in the command line. We'll paste that and hit enter. This stuff here in master is very, very risky. You probably don't want to paste this stuff in because it pertains to the filters and the gyro and all that stuff has changed. So let's leave that alone. But there are a couple of these settings that I recognize and I know are safe to use. Like serial RX provider is my 
crossfire serial receiver. Small angle. I know I want to move that. My, my OSD settings and my craft name. I know that's going to transfer over. I'm going to leave this filter stuff alone. Here are my rates. We're going to go ahead and paste in my rates. And that's probably fine. I'll type save. And that'll be done. Now this quadcopter has the DJI system on it, so the ports tab is very simple. We've just got a receiver and the MSP connection for the air unit. We've got DSHOT 600, and it's set to 8K, 8K. Did I have bi-directional DSHOT before? Set DSHOT binder on. So I was using bi-directional DSHOT before, so I probably want to use it again. So we'll turn that on, and... Since this is an F4 processor, we're going to need to probably go down to a 4K PID loop. And let's just save and reboot and see what our CPU utilization is like. It's still very low. Only 4%. I'm really surprised about that. All right. Power and battery. I like to set the max cell voltage to 435 just because sometimes there's a little voltage spike at the beginning that throws it off. And it reads, it'll read a fully charged 4S as an empty 5S, it'll misread that. It's not very often, especially if you use high volts, you need to update that, you need to raise that. PID tuning, we're gonna work totally on the default PIDs. My rates, I have copied in. Filters, we're gonna go, I'll tell you what, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to 1.5. Um, RPM filters are active. Dynamic notch width percent is gonna be zero. 250 for the Q, min hertz is 70, and max hertz is 350. Great, that's fine, that should be pretty safe. Uh, like every quad, I had these filter sliders all the way on 2.0. No, shush, why can't I go any further? I got expert, oh, expert mode wasn't on. Yeah, okay, that's better. Um, okay, this is probably pretty safe. So crossfire receiver still isn't binding. I'm going to guess that I need to uh, update the firmware on this receiver. So I'm going to go to the crossfire Lua script, and I'm going to put the controller into bind mode, and it should pick that up. Yeah, update micro RX, enter, done. It's updating. I love this. This is the best thing TBS ever did. Okay, that's maybe a little bit of a strong statement. The ability to, uh, like, I'm, I'm updating the firmware on my Crossfire module for various reasons to get new features like Crossfire Shot. And there's this quad that I haven't flown in a while because the arm was broken. And I haven't updated the receiver. And instead of having to pull the freaking thing out of the quad to flash it, free sky, you just, I'm like, okay, update receiver. It's doing it right now. That's all. I know, FreeSky has like one OTA receiver and one module that supports over the air firmware updates, but it's just like one. All Crossfire does it. All right, good. We have movement. Sticks channel mapping is correct. Endpoints are correct. All good there. I'm going to go into the Crossfire configuration Lua script, and I'm going to set the, because I'm doing Crossfire shot, um, I have a video about Crossfire shot. Link in the video description. I'm going to go ahead and change the RF profile force to 150 hertz mode, and I'm going to make sure failsafe is set to cut. Uh, and good, our receiver set up. Our flight modes, copy those over. Let's just double check. No black box on this quad. So since there's no black box, we'll set this to no logging. That'll save us a few processor cycles. Oh, let's double check also that in the motors tab, let's make sure our bi-directional D-shot is working. Yes, we have 0% errors. That's good. The motors are set to reversed, but are they actually reversed? How did I build this quad? Double check my motor direction is correct. That's, that's a good, that would have really tripped me up. Ha ha, they're not reversed. So newbie drone ships this flight controller set for motors reversed, but that's not how I built it. Go to the configuration tab. Common misconception that this reverses the motors. It doesn't. It just tells the flight controller that you reverse the motors. Save and reboot. Looking good. Uh, one last thing to do, and that's test the failsafe. We're going to arm the quad. Oh, it's not going to let us arm the quad. We'll go to the motors tab. We'll do, I understand the risks. Now we can arm the quad. And we'll test the failsafe. Shut the radio down. Good. Motors turn off. Okay. 
And at this point, the quad is safe to fly, and it's time to go out and fly it. Now, some of you are thinking, didn't Joshua just release a video, five things you must do when you first install Betaflight 4.2? Yeah, but some of those things I did, like set the PID loop rate, some of those things don't apply, like the OSD stuff doesn't apply because I'm not using an analog setup. And some of that stuff I want to, I don't want to do intentionally because I want to feel the defaults before I then start tweaking in the tuning notes. So that is going to do it for this video. And now I my packs are charged and I'm going to go outside and fly these quad. And if you want to see me fly the quad, you can check out my three packs a day playlist. That's right. Uh, I'm doing a little, um, a little, uh, what do they call it when two YouTubers work together? A collab. I'm doing a collab with myself between my Betaflight 4.2 playlist and my three packs a day playlist. If you haven't been watching that, I've been flying three packs a day, just three packs a day, with the idea that a little bit of consistent practice can make you a much, much better pilot. Those uh, videos have stick overlay, so you can see exactly what my sticks are doing. They make a great little freestyle practice. They can show you how I think about practicing and getting better, and they can just show you, well, maybe some nice freestyle you never know so check out that playlist down in the video description as well as my betaflight 4.2 playlist which has all of my betaflight 4.2 tips and tricks and it's only a few videos now but there will be more as of course betaflight 4.2 comes out thank you so much for watching i gotta get out there and fly happy flying to youtube do you see this baby isn't he cute hit the subscribe button Join my Patreon, use my affiliate links, or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Google Gaga, subscribe to my daddy. <laughs>